Ah, this is a great second effort. Sure is. Looks like the Knights' defense is finally coming alive here, here in the big. second quarter. You know, Keegan started now, to pile up some okay, Joe finally yardage on the ground there. All right. It's second and three from okay. the 45. Give they me five minutes. Wide. Here's the snap. Hands off to Beckworth. Looks like he's got the first down with plenty to spare. Oh, Truman and Yanker opened up a big, big hole there on Give the up, uh, left side. Oh, it looks like we've got some unhappy Hornets out there. <laughs> Boy, I say, they're all over Beckworth. I'm surprised they didn't get a call on that one. Oh, screen setting up nicely there. Across midfield into Hornet territory, rambling down to the 42. Seems like he can suck a lot of time in the Hornet secondary. So Bob is definitely stacking up like another 100-yard day for Keegan. He's already got 66 yards on only nine carries for 7.3 average today. Keegan, with this kind of weather, why not? Nozio brings him up. Smith and Jones is a wide out. Smith in motion. Long count. Snap. Hands off to Morgan around the weak side. Down to the 40. Believe it. I know I put money in my account. Nikki. Oh, my bank account checks are going to bounce like Michael Jordan. Now my bike is on the fritz, and I just know my mechanic's going to take one look at it and Nick. say, No, that looks like to me. And I'll ask, No, what? And he'll say, it Looks like about 500 bucks. Uh, Nick. Luck can't get any worse. Uh, you want to bet? What the hell is that? Catch you later. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, be a love and fetch me another cup. Fetch it yourself, Buster. The name's Chalmers. Dane Chalmers. You can't be Dane Chalmers. He's the obit writer at the register. Was. The register folded. Oh, what a shame. You must be looking for work. For a date? Well, thanks, but I'm pretty well settled. You are working? Here? Here which means senior obit editor, which means he's your boss. He says, jump, you say, how high? She's the one I was telling you about. Oh, you must be Miss Page. Yes, I am. And this is my coffee cup. And this is my chair. And this is my computer with my obit of Carl Garrett, which I spent all night working on. All night? It didn't look like you spent more than five minutes on that. I was just punching it up when you flounced in here. Flounced? I have not yet begun to flounce. Honey, I can 
can have your job for this. Looks like you've already got it. Yeah, hemorrhoid. So what do you think? What do you think? Needs work, Mr. Beckett. Gotta go. Promised my mom I'd be home for lunch. Five minutes? Two. You're on. So, where does it need more work, exactly? It's boring. Who asked you? Needs pictures, Mr. Beckett. Lots of them. Catch you later. Kids are critic. Babysitting, have we? No, we have not, and we are not explaining ourselves. Yeah, no problem. Ye hey, gods. Methinks the lady doth not protest. Well, well, well. Something rotten in the state of Pageville, is it? Nothing a good plague couldn't cure. Really? All right, come on. All right, what is it, sweetheart? Hmm? A picture of someone near and dear, something like that? Yeah, me. All right. Tell me all about it. This skirt-chasing obit writer named Chalmers comes over from the register, and they make him my boss. I, I just made a complete fool of myself when I... Whoa. Whoa, Nellie, what have we here? Oh, no, that, that's nothing. It's nothing. Ooh, no, no, no. Come on, you don't want to read that. I do. It was afternoon and time for his bath. That was met with great apprehension and abject terror by... baby mongoose. I don't know where it came from. I don't know it was lying about. Oh, right. Somebody probably dropped it down your chimney. Along with this lovely portrait. That is Mr. Mongoose. Oh. Maxwell Beckett. Are you writing a children's book? No, Maxwell Beckett is not writing a children's book. A.J. Edison is writing a children's book. And Maxwell Beckett declines further comment because Maxwell Beckett is up to his neck in get-rich-quick schemes at the behest of his bloody agent and his money-grubby wife. Little Orphan Annie, your research assistant? Oh, no, no, I mean, she's just a little market research. That's all youthful perspective. You could have asked me to help. I was a kid once, too, you know. What a frightening concept. It's not like I have anything better to do with my life. Look, why don't you just tell me all about it? And then when you've finished, go out and treat yourself to a favorite meal. Then you can go home, snuggle up, watch an old movie, and get a good night's sleep. And who knows, in the morning, you might wake up and find that none of this has ever really happened. It's a fairy tale. Bits. Mr. Chalmers, please. This is Chalmers. Ah. You, Mr. Chalmers, have made a grievous error of judgment about a young woman whose desk you are now occupying. The page kid? Her name is Nikki, and she's not a kid, Mr. Chalmers. She has the makings of a fine investigative reporter, and you, my friend, have sent her packing. She went of her own volition. Well, only because you showed her the egress. Who the hell is this? Your conscience giving you a warning, Mr. Chalmers. Miss Page is already knocking on the doors of the Chronicle. I imagine your new superiors will not be pleased with you when Miss Page's byline is plastered all over the front page of your opposition. I never intended for the kid to quit. Then I'd do something about it if I were you. Oh, by the way, Mr. Chalmers, you never received this call? Received a call from who? I think that was pretty bloody good. Though I say so myself. Wanted. Writer with vision. Make own hours, no previous experience necessary. Not bad. Applicants must have working knowledge of UFO sightings. Wanted. Journalist aspiring to travel. Must be willing to spend summers in Baghdad. No, I don't think so. Wanted. Urdu translator for a major biblical project. What's Urdu? Not wanted. Peace offer. Save it for your bimbo brigade. Okay. Oh. 
Ooh, gotcha. Gotta recycle. <laughs> Look, we, we didn't hit it off too well this morning. No, really? I just thought if we're gonna work together, we ought to get to know each other a little better. Work together, you and me? Yeah, no, what do you say? Back it up a second. No, I mean the getting to know each other better part. Purely business. Just, just dinner. Drinks. Backseat of your Chevy. Cab fare home. What, don't trust yourself? I tell you what, you pick the place, and I'll just meet you there. If you don't find the evening educational and very insightful, you can leave whenever you want. No strings or roving hands attached. It's Scout's honor. Do I have to get down on my knees and beg? It'd be a start. Tread carefully with passing fancy. Mm. Oh, was a wisdom handed down to a minute and trace. Haven't I been the perfect gentleman? Yeah. Was it something I said? Oh, I'm afraid my womanizing reputation is just that. Uh, reputations come from somewhere. Okay, there, there was a period of wanderlust, but my wife Lila pointed out the financial and, shall we say, anatomical penalties for continuing a roving eye. <laughs> so what you might consider flirtatious, I call charming. A necessary virtue in what others consider a gruesome livelihood. How have you stayed no bit so long? I'm dying to get out. You're the fourth most read page in the paper. More than movies, comics. Yeah, Besides, but... Besides, I feel I provide a service. I mean, there are people out there who treasure my final words as a tribute to their loved ones. And that makes me feel good. So, are we partners? Partners. So... Who's our first assignment, Carl Gary? Uh, I'd better handle that one. Shortest sure love partnership I ever saw. No, no, Nick, you don't understand. Carl and I worked together at the register for years. A week ago, he came into my office. He was in a total panic. Said someone was trying to kill him. And was a prophet. Did he say who? I can't tell you. It's been real nice working with you. No, it's just, it could be dangerous. I, I don't want you involved. Don't worry about me. I always get involved. Trust me, Nikki. Carl was dealing with some very powerful people. And I'm gonna blow the lid off his murder. I just don't want you getting hit by the flag. Look, I've jotted down some notes. When I get a clearer picture, I will clue you in. I promise. You better. You haven't touched your fortune cookie. Don't have to. Things look pretty good from where I sit. Well, that wasn't so bad, was it? No. I guess it's no worse than the dentist. Oh, thank you very much. No, thank you for a wonderful evening. It was everything you promised and nothing more. I thought we went through all this before. Right. Yeah. Right, sorry. Yeah, I left my helmet inside. Look. Thanks again. See you tomorrow. Yeah. See you tomorrow. A wise man steps carefully. <laughs> Argument, a tiff, a misunderstanding, a difference of opinion. How many different ways do you want to hear it? You could have whacked him. You were the last one to see Chalmers alive. And if I had been there one second sooner, I'd be dead too. If you ask me, you should be busting your tail looking for the killer instead of busting me. So, did you do it? Must be if I had killed anyone here, you'd be the first to know. Ooh, defensive. I bet the cop has picked up on that. Nikki couldn't have done it. She's a Pisces. Sounds fishy. <laughs> Look, if you don't mind, I'd like to finish my obituary on Chalmers. You spit at my files. Thought I might find a confession or something. It's about this final paragraph. Chalmers was working on an exclusive expose on the Carl Garrett murder before his death. How come I didn't hear about this? 
read my lips. Exclusive, which definitely excludes you. Fine. I won't print it. Oh, yes, you will. Dane Chalmers was on to something big. I think he knew who killed Carl Garrett. Now, he didn't live to print that story, but I'm going to finish it. And if you try to stop me, you'll find your name in the obituary column next to his. She doesn't scare me. Careful. They say murder is always easier the second time. I can put that file here. Seems awfully mean. Well, he's, he's a mongoose, isn't he? I mean, he eats snakes for a living. He's supposed to be mean. Well, why did he lock Mrs. Mongoose out of the house? <laughs> Look, he locks Mrs. Mongoose out of the house because Mrs. Mongoose wants to repossess the house. And I don't like the part where he hides the money from Mrs. Mongoose in his sock drawer. Look, he hides the money from Mrs. Mongoose in the sock drawer because he hasn't got any money left. Because Mrs. Mongoose has spent it all buying designer grass for the bedroom. Well, how come Mr. Mongoose tried to eat his Uncle Drake? I'll tell you how come. Because his Uncle Drake could wink him into writing a fairy story for prepubescence. Touchy, touchy. It's just constructive catechism, Mr. Beckett. <laughs> Suit yourself. Don't blame me if you get slammed in Weekly Reader. I don't give a damn about the Weekly Reader. I'll give him a touch of my constructive catechism. Look at what that is. I really don't have time for this. Sure you do. Shirley Temple back there said you're stuck. I am not stuck. I'm halfway between baby Mongoose's first day of school and teaching him how to hop, or is it skip? You're stuck. I'm not stuck. I am hopelessly stuck. Good. Then you have time to look into Dane Chalmers' murder. Chalmers is dead. Don't you read the papers? The only things I've been reading lately have been coloured in by crayons. Surely the police are looking into this. Oh, yeah, they are. I'm their number one suspect. Don't be daft. I'm serious, Max. I really need your help. Oh, Smith, I'm, I'd, I'd love to help you, but oh, I wouldn't know where to start. I do. There are obviously notes that Chalmers made to himself on my computer about the suspects in the Garrett murder case. I know he left the names off in case of crying eyes. Even though he's only dressed for a few hours. <laughs> anyway, ever since I've known you, it seems to me I'm always surrounded by dead people. It's just a coincidence. <laughs> Listen, Max, one of the suspects might be here. Let's go over the list again. Oh, my sweet. Okay, first, there's the Italian film sex goddess and her first husband, the all star baseball player. Then there's the guy she ditched him for. The flamboyant team owner. I know, you've already told me all of that. I tell you what, if I happen to spot Sophia Loren around here, Wearing a funny hat, playing baseball with a with a man smoking a big cigar, you'll be the first to know. That's not going to happen. Max. Oh dear, isn't it really? And I was so hoping it was. Why are we here then? Talk to the widow. <sighs> I like talking to widows. I just wanted to offer my condolences. <laughs> Excuse me, Mrs. Chalmers. I'm Nikki Page. I... Uh, how dare you show your face around here? I don't understand. No, you don't, do you? You were with my husband before he was killed. The police think you did it, you little... Miss, Mrs. Chalmers, I do assure you that uh, Miss Page here is in no way responsible for the death of your husband. I, I, I really do assure you of that. 
Oh, uh, Maxwell Beckett, formerly of New Scotland Yard. And here to offer my condolences to you and my assurance that the real killer of your husband will be tracked down and brought to justice. The last few days have turned my life into this circus. People crawling out of the woodwork asking me all sorts of questions about Dane, who he saw, what he was working on, who he was talking to. Did he mention Carl Garrett to you? No, no, no. He never talked about his work. He never shared anything. At least not with me. Excuse me. If you don't mind, I'm going to let my brother drive me home. If I've said anything today that may have upset you, I'm sorry, but you'll have to understand this is not one of my better days. What a waste of a day this has been. My God, that's Joey Templeton. Oh, Joey Templeton. <laughs> Who the hell's Joey Templeton? Joey? I thought it was you. How you doing, Nick? God, it's great to see you. It seems like it's been forever. Honolulu, 89 Pro Bowl. Yeah, right. You and Big Eddie did shooters till what? Four in the morning? And you still click for three TDs. Yeah, well, my receivers made me look good. Oh, get out of here. You were great. And you know, my dad still hasn't forgiven the Niners for letting the Marauders snap you up in the 78 draft. How was your dad, anyway? Freezing his butt off in Green Bay. <laughs> Good. So what are you doing here? Uh, paying my respects to the widow. You knew Dane Chalmers? Well, we met once at the paper when I did an interview. And I just happened to be in town between endorsements, so... I've been on the road a lot lately, Nick. You know, ever since... Oh, oh yeah, I was real sorry to hear about you and Claudine splitting up. Yeah, well, you know how these things happen. It's great to see you. I gotta slide out of here. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Joey must have been the baseball player in Chalmers' notes. I thought he was a football player. He was. 12 years with the Memphis Marauders. He retired last year because of a bad back. And then he became a... Then he became a baseball player, right? Joey never played baseball. All right, now I'm confused. Get a clue, Max. Chalmers fudged the truth a little bit to keep the suspects anonymous. Oh, I see. Ah, right. So that the football player becomes a baseball player. Right. Italian sex symbol is really French. French, right. Claudine Molière, Joey's ex-wife, who subsequently married the owner, owner of, of the football, football team. team. Right. Seth Hirschfeld, president of the Memphis Marauders. Right. Max, that means if Chalmers was right, and either Joey, Claudine, or Hirschfeld pushed Garrett into that whirlpool. And Chalmers figured out which one did it, so the killer shot him outside the restaurant. It sort of seems strange to me that the, the killer actually shot Chalmers and electrocuted Garrett. It's kind of tough to drag a jacuzzi all over town. <laughs> Still needs explaining there, doesn't it? Well, that's what I keep you around for. Is that what you keep them around for? No, thanks. I already bought my tickets to Policeman's Ball. We meet what? again, Miss Page. Well, it's bound to happen when you camp out in front of my apartment. Does this mess of a thing belong to you? Yes. It's mine. Registered and everything. Everything must include this, then. No way. That's not mine. Nikki Page, I'm placing you under arrest for the murder of Dane Chalmers. What? Hang about a bit. Please be advised that anything you this say can be held against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to an attorney while being questioned. Police brutality, back help! I mean, there's got to be some mistake. I'll have you out in, in, in five minutes. <laughs> They never come, especially at night. But I'm innocent. So was I once until he came. <gasps> they got me in here for murder. Murder? I... Who did you kill? No one. Hey, anybody? Why won't they listen? They're afraid. Afraid of what? Of me. By the way, I'm Sandra. Sandra Alucard. Nikki Page. You see, they must wait until morning until I must sleep. 
What are you in here for? They caught me in the act. Act? Oh, you're a hooker. Heavens no. The act, you know, as in going for the jugular. You don't expect me to believe it. What did you say your name was? Alucard, as in Dracula spelled backwards. You know what? I don't think I'm your type. I'm positive. Yes. I really, really want to get out of here now! What took you so long? Look, have you, have you ever tried to, to set bail and, and raise the cash all on the same night? Okay, okay. At least you didn't have to spend all night caged up with Dracula's daughter. Beg your pardon? Never mind. I'm really worried, Max. I was the last person to see the victim alive. Someone put that gun in my bike. As far as the cops are concerned, I'm it. Yeah, well, look, just try and relax. Will you just try and relax? We none of us want to see you in prison blue. All right, I'm sorry. We're going to do our best to get you out of this mess, and we will. I'm not going back to jail, Max. One night in that place was enough. I mean, I felt so trapped, you know, so dirty. You don't really think I could murder anyone, do you? <laughs> Don't be daft. Of course not. I mean, if you wanted to murder anyone, you'd have murdered me, wouldn't you, weeks ago? Yeah. You bet, yeah. <laughs> so, which one do you think did it? Which one what? Who? Chalmers List. The owner, the sex goddess, or the quarterback? Oh, well, yes, the uh, evil trio, eh? And you think that, uh, that one of those sides has got something to, uh, to hide, right? Something Carl Garrett revealed to Dane Chalmers. Something which costs both men their lives. Mm-hmm. Well, as always, it's best to keep it simple, right? Arca Joey. You don't really think that Joey's a killer, do you? <laughs> Hope not. Kinda had a crush on him in junior high. Ah, uh, I see. Right, well, you watch it. talking to one of your nickel and dime clients here, Travis. I've waited on you before. You can damn well wait on me for a couple of days. Mr. Hirschfeld? I'll make it simple for you. The Marauders aren't for sale. The new kid's coming along finally quarterback. I don't know any bookies, let alone have one. My wife's career is her own business, and all my cars are in tip-top shape. You should put that down on a card. It'll save you a lot of time and trouble. Look, I'm a busy man. I'm pressed for time, and all you bozos ask the same questions. Mr. Uh... Beckett, Maxwell Beckett. Maxwell Beckett, the mystery writer? Yes, that's right. Well, formerly of Scotland Yard. Ah. Yeah, we played in London last year, the American Bowl. Got our clock clean, 20 zip. Really? Yeah, well, we've got some very good clock repairers in London. I'm glad they got you fixed up. So what's it gonna be, Mr. Beckett? A couple of tickets for the weekend game against the Knights? A game ball for the kids? As a matter of fact, I'm going to talk to you about a man called Carl Garrett. Do you realize how long we've known each other? Yeah, yeah lots of memories, huh? Like those Gatorade busts at your dad's after practice in college? Watching you split the seams in the night secondary? Hey, trust me, they got their licks in, too. We are not here for a trip down memory lane, are we, Nick? You could always read me pretty well, couldn't you? Like a nickel defense. Have you ever read Carl Garrett in the sports pages? The writer murdered in the locker room. You must have known him, right? Sure, covered the Knights. As a matter of fact, he interviewed me the few times we were lucky enough to beat you guys. We shared a few beers. Carl was okay. Were you at the game last Sunday? Yeah. Did you run into Carl there? Mm, no. We were drinking buddies, just like I said. Nick, what's going on? Forget it. I must be crazy. You think I had something to do with his death? Nick, give me one good reason. Thank 
Garrett was always chewing my ear for an interview. <laughs> He'd call me at home. He'd get me in my box during the games. The guy was a real putz. Well, what did he want to interview you about? Well, they all ask. My flamboyant lifestyle, my movie star wife, my alleged ties to professional gambling. Like I said, I don't know any bookies, let alone... Have one, yeah, right, right. What about Dane Chalmers? Sports writer or ball player? Neither. Obituary writer. Murdered a few days ago. What gives here, Beckett? You trying to spring an end around on me? I beg your pardon? Are you blitzing me here or what? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> well, I never met the guy. Anyway, I'm pressed for time, so I'll lay it on the line for you. Sure, I threw Garrett out in his butt. But if I killed every writer that took a pot shot at me, I'd have hung up my jersey long ago. Yeah, so you would. I, uh, I thought you might like to have this. You're kidding. I don't know what to say. Well, how about, gee, thanks, Joey. I love it. Of course I do. You know, actually, I was going to send it to you last year after the season, but I never got around to it. Why'd you hang him up, Joey? I mean, bad back or no, you were connecting better than ever. Life has a habit of getting in the way of the game sometimes. You and Claudine? You know, I always thought you guys were the perfect couple. Yeah, didn't everybody. Yeah, it's just the media talking. You know, the football star and the sex symbol. I don't know, Nick. I guess I just got tired of putting on my game face all the time. Things were that bad? Well, she just wasn't the right one for me. You know, I was always jealous of her. I mean, I remember when Dad would bring you over to the house, and I'd always wish I was, like, five, six years older. Like, maybe if I told you I'd grow up real quick, you'd wait for me. You should have told me back then. How about now? No, no. I I'm sorry, Nick. It's, I just, I know I'm sending out mixed signals here. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm pushy. I'm... No, Nick, it's not you. It's me. like being in a fishbowl. Cosby was really disappointed they let you out. He was looking forward to becoming pen pals. Oh, remind me to hate his guts. Oh, Nick, don't forget to hate his guts. Thank you. I was going to bake you a cake. Oh, how sweet. Oh, oh, funny. Very funny, everyone. Hey, Nikki, how was the Wait till you see this. <laughs> a dock and pay for what? Cosby said you missed a day's work. I was in jail. We need a better defined benefit program. Well, maybe I was better off there. Three squares a day, no more deadlines on dead people, no more rejection from members of the opposite sex. Sounds like I missed something. There's nothing to miss. That's the problem. This experience affected you, Nick. You're not making sense. Joey Templeton. My past was sort of incomplete. Maybe you're not his type. What kind of girl did you go for back in college? I don't know. I mean, there was really no one in particular. Football was his life. Until Claudine just dropped in out of nowhere. Sounds like love at first sight. I thought it was. They seemed so close. But, you know, something wasn't right. I mean, he said that to me today. Are you kidding? Have you seen Claudine Moliere? What man in the world wouldn't fall for a woman like that? Beats me. He just said that she wasn't the right one for him. That he was tired of putting on his game face. That's what he was trying to say. Say what? Joey's gay. Yes, who is it? Yeah, room service. What do you already ordered it? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mrs. Hirschfield, uh, for, the, for the subterfuge. I, I simply had to talk to you. 
Uh, my name is Maxwell Beckett. I don't understand. You might as well let them in, Claudine. It's all bound to come out sooner or later. Sorry, I thought you guys hated each other. The messy divorce. A publicity sham, right? Écoutez-vous, ça suffit, hein? It's okay, Claudine. There's no use covering. That's why I came here to see you. They know all about it. You filed for divorce when you discovered that Joey here was involved with someone else. A man. Carl Garrett. Claudine's been an angel through this whole thing. She protected me when she didn't need to. She even spread rumors about my involvement with another woman just to protect my career and my endorsements. I'd do anything in the world for her. Including murder? Me? Kill Carl? It, things didn't work out with him and me, but that doesn't mean I'd resort to killing him. So, we presume that you're both innocent. When you discovered that it wasn't working out between you and Carl, let me put it another way. Did he ever squeeze you? No, for, no, for money. Did, did he? I mean, did he ever squeeze you for money? Yeah, he tried. But I told him if he wanted to go ahead and go public, to go right ahead. So he backed off. Said he had another mark in mind, thanks to me. Did he really? Now you were you were you retired right through injury, I understand, uh, and you came out of an MTV season. MVP, Max. Oh, right. Well, yes, whatever. You came out of it anyway, and you can see now why I keep her hanging around with me, can't you? <laughs> so, and it was a back injury, correct? Well, you seem to be walking around here quite well now. It's healed, I presume. What's he saying? I made this up? No, no, Max, Joey would have to be bedridden to hang it up. Hang what up? His jersey. He wouldn't retire unless he were hurt. Oh, retire? Yeah, well, would you excuse us for just a minute? Unless, unless, of course, someone forced his hand, right? at 46. When Joe's tossing today, they might double that. Well, I don't make a habit of carrying 50 grand on me. Well, let's take it on credit, won't we? Just keep me out of this, huh? You're gonna regret this, Travis. Where you're going, you ain't gonna make him regret Bubkis. And just where is it that I'm going? Just for the murder of Carl Garrett. What a frock. Really? You tried to make Joey Templeton throw football matches, and when he refused, you persuaded him to retire. That's a bigger crock. If that's true, why hasn't Templeton come forward to accuse me? Because Claudine told you Joey was gay, and you threatened to expose Joey's secret unless he quit. Right. And how were you to know that Joey Templeton told his lover, Carl Garrett, everything, so that when they split up, Garrett tried to blackmail you, didn't he? And you killed him. Sounds like something out of one of your books, Mr. Beckett. Yeah, it does. Too bad you don't have any proof. Well, if you'll excuse me, I want to catch the end of the game. I do have proof, actually, Mr. Hirschfeld. I do have proof. Carl Garrett received a phone call in the press box just before he died. Now, I happen in my hand to have a copy of your cellular phone bill. It's got all the calls here, local or long distance, including one to Carl Garrett in the press box last Sunday. I wasn't going to let that little twerp bleed me to death. Once he got started, he would never quit. And then you killed Chalmers to protect yourself. Chalmers? I told you I never heard of anyone named Chalmers. Well, you've heard everything, haven't you, Detective Mueller? Every word of it. Every word. All right, Ant's on your back. Okay, 
Let's go. Don't plan any trips to Baja yet, kid. You're still not off the hook for Chalmers. Give me a break. Oh, come on. Do her a favor. Nasty man. Yes. But, you know, that does not look like a phone bill to me. It's not a phone bill, is it? These are my notes for Mr. Mongoose. <laughs> hey, come on, let's get out of here. Come on. Baby Mongoose would not eat his dinner. Well, I can't eat, period. Why is not baby Mongoose hungry? Because he's eating too many river rats. That's where I'm headed. Up the river. Big house. Who's cow? Slam it down. I don't like it. Oh, you've got a better idea, I suppose, have you? I could shoot myself. No, I can't. I hate guns. Baby Mongoose is mad at his mommy. That's why he won't eat. Well, why is he mad? Oh, where do hmm? I start? The fact that Chalmers and Garrett's murders aren't connected? But I'm still number one with the bullet on the FBI's most wanted list? There. All right, come on. Why is he mad? Don't ask me. You're the writer, Mr. Beckett. Oh, come on, child. Help me out, will you? I'm at my rope's end here. Rope? They can hang you in this state? I don't know. Maybe his mommy poured porridge on him and ruined his new outfit. That's a good idea. That a laundry scene, what a good idea. And it won't come out? And it won't come out. <laughs> Just like that stupid soup on my bike. <laughs> Just like that stupid soup on her bike. It won't come out. It won't come out. <laughs> Leaving so soon? Right. And it won't come out. He's getting one of his ideas. I can tell. Right. All right, Nikki. You and I have got a job to do, OK? And you, young lady, we're taking you home first. And then I want all those pages ready for me when I come back. Mr. Beck and Miss Page. <laughs> How nice to see you. Mrs. Chalmers? Have you heard something about Dane? Yes, yes, we have. Well, that's wonderful. Would you like to come in? Oh, well, perhaps, perhaps later. Do you think I can have a close look at your car? Be my guest. Yeah. So you and your husband drove separate cars? Always. Dane had an old Corvette. He wouldn't let me touch it. Oh, it's a mess, I know. My whole life's been one since Dane died. Yeah. You should have had this washed off, you know. Soup. Soup. Just like on my bike. Soup that was dropped in the street outside the restaurant where your husband died. Which means you were there, too. He promised. I wanted so badly to believe him. You should have. That night, he threw me one of his patented excuses about dinner, starting all over again. So I followed him. I, I saw him with you, having such a good time. He kissed you goodnight. What was I supposed to think? You waited outside the restaurant, and you shot him to death. And you put the gun in her motorcycle. When I met you at the funeral, I saw in your face that you were telling the truth. I realized what a dreadful mistake I'd made. What a dreadful mistake. Because they didn't use your drawings? Drawings are fine. So what's the problem? It's a runaway bestseller. Isn't that so bad? How about she wants me to do a sequel? Big advance. Well, that's great. Bloody awful. Oh, I get it. We're fresh out of ideas for Mr. Mongoose. Got plenty of those. 
Well, it's me then. I'm crazy. I don't see the problem here. I sold the rights to Mr. Mongoose. Are you nuts? I sold the rights to Mr. Mongoose to pay for your bail money. You did that? For me? say that one day you'll buy them back for me. Wish I could. What do you say? I buy you a nice big lollipop instead. It's not exactly the same somehow, is it? Ice cream sundae? Sprinkles? And a big cherry? <laughs> Next, on Over My Dead Body. There's blood on this lady's hands. I understand that you're going to write my book. Me? Are you going to write the Linda Talmadge story or not? No! I'm used to getting what I want. And now, Ashley. I want my child back. I want my daddy back. What the hell are you doing? Complete objectivity always has been and always will be my number one priority. And I didn't count on falling in love with you. Max, I don't have a good feeling about this. Every day of his life, he risks getting killed. Tomorrow, get ready for the hot new action and the all-new wise guy. And Sunday, it's share and romance and share and laughter. And share and pasta in the movie that has everyone wishing they were born Italian. Share in Moonstruck, Sunday on CBS.